All right. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular virtual meeting of the City Planning Commission Committee of the Whole. Today is Thursday, January 27th, 2022. My name is Alyssa Olson, and I am the Vice President of the Planning Commission. This meeting includes the remote participation of board members and staff as authorized under Minnesota Statutes Section 13D.021 due to the declared local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting this meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the Minnesota Open Meeting Law. Uh, at this time, I'll call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll for quorum. Good afternoon, everyone. I must apologize. I was so concerned with <laughs> um, getting the tile slide up that I did not get my documents in order. So let me take care of that really quick. Okay. Um, slightly out of order. Uh, Commissioner Baxley. Here. Commissioner Alper. Here. Commissioner Smiley. Here. Commissioner Ford. Here. Commissioner Marwa. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Olson. Here. Commissioner Sweezy. Here. Did I miss anyone? Okay, so that's eight members present. Thank you. All right, so we have a quorum. Next, we will proceed to the agenda, a copy of which was posted for public access to the city's legislative information management system, which is available at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. Commissioners, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Commissioner Smiley. I move to adopt the agenda. Commissioner Marwa. I second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Commissioner Smiley. Aye. Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner Marwa. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Aye. Commissioner Sweezy. Aye. Commissioner Olson. Aye. That's eight yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes and the agenda is adopted. Uh, next is acceptance of the minutes from the meeting held on December 9th, 2021. Could I have a motion to accept those minutes? Commissioner McGuire. I move to accept the minutes. Commissioner Smiley. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Commissioner Baxley. Aye. Commissioner Alper. Aye. Commissioner Smiley. Aye. Commissioner Ford. Aye. Commissioner Marwa. Aye. Commissioner McGuire. Aye. Commissioner Sweezy. Aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. That's eight yeas and zero nays. All right, that motion passes. Um, OK, next is our discussion items. So first up, 
Um, is 310, 318, and 322 2nd Street North, and staff is Aaron Hanauer. All right. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. So for this site, it is a 17,000 square foot vacant lot, frontage on 2nd Street, and vehicle access with an access easement on 3rd Avenue. In 2019, this project or this subject property received approvals for a seven story building. And those are not acted upon. So we had this new proposal in front of us. Eight floor mixed use building. With an eight floor penthouse, um, 96 units. Thousands about a thousand square feet of retail and 47 enclosed parking spaces. Exterior materials, brick and metal panel. There's a green roof design plantings and a substantial solar array along with that penthouse. Just a point because it was something I noted first one discussion on was this slight recess about seven or eight feet on Second Street to allow access bike access to the Cedar Lake Trail. Again on the site plan. Um, and then that main pedestrian entrance right here. The applicants intending to apply for for premiums uh, in this corridor six. Future land use or this built form. Um, that's corridor six is the built form for the site and three FAR premiums is what the applicant will likely be seeking to get a FAR 5.35 affordable housing and closed parking and environmental sustainability and two height premiums affordable housing and environmental sustainability. Applications. We've noted site plan review rezoning just for that small portion of the property near the near the trail to line up with the let's see from for with the B4N zoning with the majority of the site at 310 Second Street. So that sliver going from C3A to B4N just to align and then a preliminary and final plat to allow for the property. Um, that railroad property to be joined to this property. Disregard the height variance request, I think. Um, if one thing I've appreciated with the applicant is their patience and willingness to to make modifications and look to conform to the to the requirements in the zoning code. Uh, before I turn it over, just outlining the feedback requested. Looking just general design thoughts, ideas, suggestions that you'd like to um, conversation you'd like to have with the applicant. And then I noted the I don't know if I'm overly sensitive and I know Public Works will review this, but just that access point for the bikes they, and the access point for people going into the building. I'm sure the applicants thought about it a lot. They have a planting and uh, there's a curb cut that I think lines up around here, so it's trying to get bikes away from that main entrance. Um, we have this design review with you, and then we also have a design review with the HPC next week. And they'll be looking to go to HPC for formal entitlements shortly after that design review, and then come back to you with the applications that we've listed. So I'm happy to answer questions you may have. Thank you, Aaron. Commissioners, are there any questions for staff? Commissioner McGuire. Thanks. Can you just expand upon the overhang area? When I was looking at the site plan, um, I was just really confused. If you look at the elevation that like um, there's an overhang and then it shows the retail. Yeah, that one you were just on where it shows the retail. Is that area in front of the building there supposed to be like public access? Just like maybe a couple feet of sidewalk to get over to the retail or are people really not supposed to walk there? Um, and then is that area under that overhang you said for bike access? Is that meant to be public or is that like private access for the building too? So I'm just wondering how people like walk on this area. Is there a full size sidewalk there or is there really not? Because I see on the south side of this elevation, it kind of you highlighted it and then it ends so they can't get over to the east side of the building. So can you just clarify how pedestrians and like bikes would get around the whole building? Sure, Thanks. I will. You're, you're welcome. I'll try to, and then I know the applicant knows the site 
even better than I do, but the. OK, so I, I believe this will be you know, that public private entity or um, amenity for the bike trail. This portion of the building is stepped back about, as I noted, seven or eight feet from the front property line along Second Street. The entrance would just come out um, for that retail right onto that sidewalk and and the applicant. Uh, Patrick, is it? Would you say the sidewalk is at least six feet, six to eight feet? There is your guess. Yeah, this is Patrick, uh, commissioners. It is a fairly wide sidewalk there, and then just to the south of the sidewalk, there's a bike lane on the street. So our goal was to create a striped bike crossing from the existing bike lane to the bike connection. And the intent, just to clarify, is for this to be full full public access. It's intended to be an amenity for the community. Um, and then to the access to the retail, that's really at sidewalk level. And again, that's a fairly wide sidewalk there. So um, whether you're walking west or east or trying to access that retail, there, there shouldn't be any issue. Does that answer okay. your question? Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think the elevations are just deceiving. It doesn't look like there's room to walk there. So that's yeah, helpful. It's a, it's a little bit of a goofy elevation, especially with the bridge abutment, but there is quite a bit of space there. And if you if you go to the site, you look at it or you look at an aerial of it, you can see um, the there's a drive lane of traffic. Then there's a fairly large bike lane. Then there's a large sidewalk. Then you'd have our bicycle access. So it, there's actually quite a bit of space to work with there. OK, thank you. Commissioner Marwa. Yeah, hi, Erin. Um, can you just remind us what the previous building height was? Um, what the FAR was going to be on that? Just to just to remind me. Sorry, it's been a while. Since oh. we saw this um, I will. It, it was smaller. It was about 65, 66 units. I'm going to stall right now to get you that number. Um, and see but it was slightly sl smaller i think it was a floor smaller but the that was under the previous comp plan and um the the applicant is intending to with those premiums look to look to comply but if you give me a minute or two i can i can be more specific sure no problem why don't we go to commissioner alper Go ahead, Commissioner Alper. Thanks. I saw there are 47 enclosed parking spaces. And um, um, thank you very much for, in case this question is so rudimentary that it um, doesn't even need to be asked. But as being as I'm so new to this planning commission, how does that compare with the required, any requirements? It would be. They are looking at it's probably about 0.5 spaces per um, per apartment. So, um, you know, no minimums and and definitely under the maximums for for this. Thank you. All right. And I, and I, think, and, oh, oh, I just know that um, uh, the applicant is passionate about the the bike access and and bike amenities for the site. Aaron, that the previous um, design was the timber frame one, right? And I, I just I did see a um, someone that might be able to provide a specific. Uh, I know the architect for. I could no I could the that. timber frame is on the other side of fairgrounds. Oh, OK. I got it. It is on the other side. Yes. Okay. They're both my neighbors, so I can. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and just to clarify, the uh, this is Patrick with the development. I think the timber site is 181 feet in height, and I believe we are also 181 feet to our roof. Not 100. I'm sorry, Patrick. 81. <laughs> that would be 81 feet. 181 yes. would be crazy. Sorry. All right. I'm not seeing any more commissioner questions. Usually we give the applicant um, a spot to speak if you want to go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to take a second just to introduce my team. I do have uh, Cassie Radford and Tamara Halverson from Pigeon Consulting with us here today. We also have our architects from Collaborative Design, uh, Ben Metzdorf and Bill Hickey. 
and I have Samia Headland from my company, Crow Companies here. Uh, we are a local development company. We're a long-term holder, and we're really excited to invest in the North Loop. This is a challenging site. It's a site that hasn't moved forward a couple of times, but uh, we believe that our design is a design. I know I can move it forward if I can get uh, approvals from staff and neighborhood groups. Um, we're excited about bringing our vision for sustainability to the North Loop. We think that'll resonate with the community. Uh, I, as Aaron mentioned too, I also have a really strong passion about transportation. And I, I believe that though we're building for parking today, I think that's gonna change in the future. And I think that um, trying to create this access point in the North Loop that's centrally located will be beneficial to the community. It will also create a very direct short probably the shortest path to the LRT stations that wouldn't involve crossing busy streets, um, dark alleys, things like that. It would really just be a fairly straight shot down the uh, Cedar Lake Trail. So if anybody has any questions for me, I'm really just here to answer any more questions. And uh, again, I just wanna say how excited I am for this opportunity. This is uh, working with the city of Minneapolis is fantastic. And uh, the only last thing I wanna say is that with the affordable housing, we are making a commitment to meet or exceed the affordable housing. Uh, requirements. It will be indistinguishable and it will be located within our building. We will not buy it out. We will not relocate it somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Commissioner Alper, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I, I know you mentioned transportation and uh, this location is in one of the most um, transit rich neighborhoods in Minneapolis. And um, I didn't notice um, and apologies. I got invited to this meeting. Uh, found out about one hour before this meeting. Um, so I briefly looked at your uh, the, the plan, but I'm wondering if you uh, are going to be offering anything like unbundling parking from um, um, the units or um, the other thing I was thinking of is the new uh, Metro Transit residential pass program um, for transit passes, that sort of thing. If those are any amenities you're considering. Yes, we are talking to Metro Transit and Hennepin County about some of those things. Uh, they will definitely be offered. We will also have some car sharing within the building um, and some flex some parking spots that are a little bit more challenging, but more flexible to people that might not use their cars uh, as often because we do want to promote promote an environment where people um, do use alternative forms of trans transit. So anything that we can do to improve their access to that is going to be important. I think the closest bus stop right now is about a block away. So we have really good access to those forms of transit. And just by creating less parking spots, we're naturally going to um, cause people to use other forms of transit. We're not going to build a building that's um, not parked or on where there's no parking, but we are going to limit the amount of parking spots that we put in. And then we're going to maximize the amount of electric car charging stations that we put in the ramp. And every bedroom will also have a bicycle parking spot uh, designated in the building. Commissioner, does that answer your question? Y yes, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Marwa. Yeah, hi. Um, I had a question about is this, I think it's on your photo on our page. Ooh, I just had it up. Sorry, it is the one. Um, the, the access ramp to get down the Cedar Lake Trail. Is that a public access ramp or does that, is that just to your building? I'm just, the photo kind of cut off. Where does that go to? Yep. So the so the you're talking about the bicycle access. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's for the community. Okay. Uh, we're going to mean the way it'll work is uh, Aaron and I have kind of discussed a couple options. My guess is there will be some sort of easement where we'll maintain it, so we'll keep it plowed and keep it clean, um, but it will be public access to everyone. So that that section of trail really feels like a tunnel. So as you get from like Target Field going to the river, there you just just a long narrow path. So the goal is uh, the reason we're purchasing the site from the railroad is to sort of open that section up a little bit and then we're going to put a uh, bicycle repair station down there so like a, a pump uh, access to some tools and some instructions for how to use them because I think the closest one to Minneapolis right now is over by the U and so by sort of opening that up a little bit it'll feel a little bit less like you're in a tunnel 
Uh, and again, I mean, the if you live in that vicinity right now, you have to kind of either go towards the Federal Reserve or you've got to go back towards Target Field to get access to the Cedar Lake Trail. So this will create a very centralized intersection at the trail uh, for people that live in the area. Yeah, I, I know this intersection really, very well. I live at this intersection. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, for right now, we have to kind of go up against traffic to go behind Dock Street Labs to get onto the trail on that side for this. So I do really like that this would open up um, trail access to a lot easier to get on Cedar Lake Trail. So thank you for adding the public easement portion of that. Um, I like the green wall. You have all heard me on this commission talk about more green walls and more um, I like in your deck about um, things about your kind of, you know, adding public art components into the building and caring about all that. That's great. I wish some of that would also be reflected on the exterior of this. The ex you know, the exterior of the building is what your neighbors will be seeing, not the interior. So I think there's a way to pull a lot of those great talking points that you have on the slide deck and um, values that you seem to have into the exterior portion. I think this whole wall rendering of where the vice list is coming up is a perfect example of where you could be adding more public art. I was at the neighborhood meeting last night for the North Loop, as I know um, Councilmember Rainville was, who's on this call also, and um, there was a lot of input about wanting more public art in the neighborhood. I think there's a ton of portions of this building, um, being that it will be on the trail and how accessible it will be that could do that, especially being that it's new construction. Um, I'm, you know, always happy to add to speak offline about that too, um, as a passion of mine and the field that I work in. But I, um, I think this is great. I think I really do like the easement portion. I think personally, the black looks very goth to me. I think you've probably seen comments online as well about that kind of the feedback on it just looks very dark. Um, so I'm not a personal fan of the very, very dark brick, uh, considering that your neighbors are a lot of very kind of lighter brick, historic looking buildings, but I'll add HBC to kind of give those comments. Um, my last question for you all is how has the, what, what, did, what did the Neighborhood Association feedback was on this new plan? Have you guys proposed, uh, given it to their PNZ yet? Um, we're talking to the neighborhood on the 16th. Okay. Of February. So we'll get some good feedback from them um, about that. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be my, my comments though. I think there's just some ways to, but I do like some of the amenities that you're talking about um, and especially the public easement on the bike and walking path. So that's a great neighborhood amenity. Thank you. Commissioner McGuire. Thanks. I will just echo what Commissioner uh, Marwa said. I really liked the um, inclusion of the art examples and the green wall um, in there. Um, and I like, I don't have any issues with the height or the penthouse on top um, or the roof. I like all that. Um, my only part I, when I was looking through this is really that overhang part that I asked about in the beginning, um, kind of in the top left photo that's on the screen right now, just that overhang area. I know you just talked to like not going through alleys or tunnels to get to the trail. I think that for me, depending on how it's built out could feel like a tunnel. Um, it could feel like really unsafe trying to go through there or it could feel really nice, like a nice respite um, from the snow or wind depending on how it's designed. So just under that like overhang area, I think like lighting is gonna be really important and then just like making it feel um, safe and comfortable and just like maybe some good signage in there to show that you aren't going into a private location because I think myself like lo just looking at this and maybe it's different when it comes forward with future elevations but I would never think that I someone not living there would be able to go back in there so um, just making sure that that is designed appropriately and yeah maybe some like additional lighting or something back in there. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Uh, Commissioner Baxley. Thank you. Um, I really do appreciate the uh, real focus on sustainability with us. I, I think that's uh, tremendous and um, really should be applauded. Hopefully you can set a bar here for um, the city. I really appreciate you stepping in. I think the access is, is really key, uh, being a biker, I think. Um, but really thinking about it, um, is that something when people on their bikes going down or is this more kind of a walking thing? And I, I think how it ends and how it uh, starts, I'm not quite convinced that just the planter is going to be enough to 
because I think you want people to begin that walking down. You don't want them kind of hauling off the sidewalk and booking around the corner and getting down there, uh, although that would be fun. Um, I think it's uh, I think that's one of the really nice parts about this project. It's, it's sort of stitching a couple modes of transportation together um, in a wonderful way. Um, I guess my comment on the massing of the building, um, I don't mind its height. Um, I'm just wondering, you have a great opportunity here because of the shape um, to not make it as monolithic. You know, it's almost it's sort of two bars of building. And I think when you weld them across at that top floor level with the metal panel, um, creates creates a, a kind of a bulk there that could be articulated more as um, two more better proportioned um, components of that. So. Uh, they'll still talk to each other, but I don't know if that's really helping in terms of the read of the building. I think it'd be much more delicate and elegant if um, uh, where those those recesses are, it wasn't connected at the top. We articulated the two pieces, but that's a subjective design um, opinion. Um, but um, thank you for this. Again, I think that um, uh, that focus on sustainability uh, hopefully does help your um, attractiveness of the project. I think people want to stay there and uh, appreciate the focus on the bike lane too. I think it's great. I'm not seeing any more comments. I had a couple. Um, I just want to echo what uh, Commissioner McGuire said about having lighting in the area near the ramp. I think that's pretty important. Um, I'm fine with the variance for the height. And then um, I actually kind of like the darker brick. I don't know what people will say about it compared to the neighborhood, but I think some of the renderings just make it look a little more monochromatic than it is supposed to be. So um, that is all I have. Uh, commissioners, any other comments or questions? All right. I'm not seeing any, so thank you to the applicant team for sharing your project with us. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, did thank you Commissioner for Baxley either. have an additional comment? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Just, uh, I, thank you, thank you, Hillary, for the um, comment about the renderings, because I think as you represent this, it will be important to uh, make sure that you it appears there's no light and shadow distinction on its orientation. Those have been dropped in sort of um, not in context. And actually, with the correct shade and shadow on there, we'll, I think it will help help us understand, help the public understand the projects a little richer than it's being shown. So good comment. Thanks. Yeah, thank Sorry you everybody for cutting for your, you off. Oh, no, I was just going to thank everybody <laughs> for their time and their feedback, uh, especially the input about the public art. That's something that's important. We're working on trying to figure out what areas we can designate to that. I think it adds to the vibrancy of the community for sure. So happy to talk to any of you guys offline. I think Aaron can provide you with my email or phone number. Feel free to contact me directly. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I have one comment, sorry, before the uh, applicant leaves. Um, it was just about, sorry, it was to reiterate the point about the lighting that the tunnel that Commissioner McGuire brought up. Um, I think there is a, you know, that part, like you mentioned, gets kind of dark when you're going through there on that on your bike or walking um, and considering how many people will be biking and walking through this. I think making sure that very, you could use that side of that ramp basically as a mural to make it known that this is a public right of way too, of like, you know, public, dis, yep. you know, so, uh, so it doesn't look like you're biking into someone's apartment building. Um, so I think there's a lot of way that you can incorporate art into your messaging and your signage around that too. Absolutely. And that's part of why we have that channel down the middle is to sort of open that up and sort of draw people in the direction of that. And I think we will definitely take a look at the lighting and the art aspect of that so that it is welcoming because we want it to be used. We don't want people to walk by it or bike by it and think, oh, I can't go down there. Really is the intent of that is for everybody to be able to enjoy that, you know, the access to that. So thank you. Cool. Thank you. Okay, last call for your comments. All right, uh, we'll move on to item number five, um, which is 2933 Pleasant Avenue and staff is Andrew Liska.
Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, again, the site I'm before you is located at 2933 Pleasant Avenue. This site is 16,000 square feet and is a former tow lot. The applicant is proposing a six story structure. The main floor is a grocery store. Uh, floors above include a shopping center as well as office space. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Carmel Plaza, Carmel Square area, uh, Carmel Plaza exists just south of the Greenway there, um, located mostly on Pillsbury Avenue. The new uh, Carmel Square site extends uh, Carmel Plaza all the way down to Lake Street where the Walgreens was. The corner along Pleasant and Lake uh, remains a single story automobile use. And this proposal is between Carmel Square and that single story use. Um, the applicant is calling it Yusuf Corner, Yusuf Center. Um, as of now, staff has identified a few land use applications required for this. Uh, a rezoning going from I-2 to C-2, as well as the PO, that will match the surrounding zoning of Carmel Square, Plaza, and a majority of this block. I believe the uh, auto use to the south there is C-3A, um, so this would be a slightly uh, lower density than that. Uh, next, a CUP for a shopping center in C2, as well as site plan review. The memo to Cal also um, noted a couple deficiencies as well uh, regarding the floor area ratio, as well as the height. Uh, the applicant is working on resolving both of those issues um, through FAR premiums as well as scaling back the structure slightly. The structure, again, is six stories. Uh, facing Pleasant is mostly glass. There is some uh, composite panel and there is some metal panel as well. Um, this rendering or these elevations, especially the south elevation here, uh, does show some aspects of the project that will be um, shifted back slightly as to keep this completely outside of the right of way. Um, staff has some concerns about the south elevation and what the south elevation would look like as viewed from Lake Street with the single story automobile use there. Um, currently, uh, staff feels that this building will be fairly uh, noticeable from that corner of Pleasant and Lake Street. Um, I have encouraged the applicant to maybe step in the south setback slightly just to allow for increased window coverage on that elevation. Um, other than that, the applicant is mostly looking for just general design comments in, in really finishing out uh, the rest of this project as far as the overall design and is hoping to bring this to um, the commission sooner than later. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for staff before we go to the applicant? All right, if the applicant is on the line, um, you could go ahead now. Well, uh, I'm Brian Holman. I'm the architect and the owner, uh, Bassam Sabri. He's not quite with us. He is on his way. He had a family uh, outing, picking up children from school, getting them home. So I expect he will drop in. And uh, you can, as, as uh, Andrew has mentioned, all of this Yusuf Corner, Carmel Plaza, Carmel Square, this is all Bassam Sabri's properties. And so he wanted to bring this into the community, uh, the uses of this with the grocery store on the main floor 
so that it becomes part of the community with we've got housing on on uh, Carmel Square we've got retail market in plaza and they could use some additional uh, commercial spaces which would be added and then uh, Sabri properties themselves are planning to move their offices from over East Lake Street to this location up on to uh, sixth floor so that they become part of the development here. Materials we're looking at, similar materials that we used on Carmel Square so that there will be brick that will create a black base for the project, just like Carmel Square. And then it, it'll be a brown brick going up in some locations along with uh, panels using um, uh, some, some different pieces where I'm kind of hung up right yet because we're still, we're still working on the design. We want to enhance it a little bit here. I think that what we're what we're looking for today is input as to um, what do you think in general for the project. Thank I'll, you. Oh, no, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Could you uh, explain how? So, if you parked in the Carmel Plaza, how would you access the grocery store? Is there a door there, or do you go? outside to get in? You would go outside to Pleasant Avenue and then walk on the street and then go in. Is there a so there's no, no internal connection. Is there a pedestrian route out of the parking ramp that leads to a sidewalk? The, there is. And here's the here's the owner there. Uh, Bassam, I'm online with them right now. So when you can join us, if if you make it, that'd be great. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. So the, the owner is trying to get online right now. Yeah, I don't know if you see him on the board someplace. He's trying to... Invalid. Something invalid. I can't even jump in. Bossom, can you, um, are you trying to join by phone or actually on Teams? No, uh, by phone, I'm on my phone. I just picked up my kids from school and I'm trying to join by phone. All right, uh, Andrew and I will work on getting you the call in number, okay? I greatly appreciate it. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry, get back to your question. So how do people get from parking to get to here? And in between, um, in between this project to the north is Carmel Plaza. When you go up and park in there, there is internal path that brings you back out right alongside the driveway that brings you into the parking ramp there. There's a sidewalk that comes out to the sidewalk on Pleasant. And then, of course, you just turn and you're right there. Go down to this place. OK, thank you. That answers my question. Commissioners, any questions or discussion or feedback? Commissioner McGuire. Thanks. Um, I'll just echo what staff said. I think this south elevation, the one that you can see from Pleasant Ave um, on both sides needs um, some additional windows or articulation. Um, it's really just like a flat facade with lines of windows. Um, so I think that that the other side, it seems really dressed up with those like nice curved windows and like multiple um, materials. Um, so even to my like untrained architectural eye, it just doesn't um, 
doesn't seem like that there's been as much thought put into those as the front but i do like the front elevation the one the west side elevation i like that um, i think that looks really nice so if we could just continue that around the building i think that would be good so that was really my only comment i think the use is good um, and it makes sense in the context but um with but commissioner olson said making sure that the pedestrian access makes sense so people can actually access this easily too agreed the good comment Any other comments or questions? Otherwise, we can maybe wait for the other applicant to try to log in. I'm sure that Bassam would like to say a few words. Okay. Be because he's so important in the community there. Uh, I don't know if, if you haven't resolved it yet. I take it that he can't connect. I just, I don't have his phone number. I sent the call in information to his email address. Mm. I can also invite him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can give you his phone number if that helps. Sure, let's give that a try. 612 We've got a comment from Commissioner Baxley. Yeah, thank you. Um, Brian, I just, I, I know things are in process here. It's just um, having a tough time sort of piecing things together. So maybe just one comment on how the three dimensional views are presented. Um, and the elevations. I appreciate the overalls a lot, which are nice. I think maybe some more attention on a little bit more context uh, with the uh, kind of traditional perspectives would really be helpful to understand how this sort of nestles in the in the community. And I think making sure that we are understanding light and shadow. These are all uh, obviously without light and shadow on. I know you're modeling it, you're getting together, but I think those aspects for us on how to read the building is is really important. So we want to make sure when you do do those that that part of the reality of the building um, kind of comes through. Um, mm -hmm. I think the investment in the neighborhood is wonderful. I think the kind of mix of use is great. Um, but I think spending a little bit more time on understanding um, how it feels in the neighborhood with these perspectives a little bit wider, more context will really help us understand the project. Um, and all this aspects much better. Well, okay. how how would you suggest yep. how would you suggest that uh, will make you feel how it feels in the neighborhood? I, I'm this is really a vague question to what you ask, and I'm sorry. This is Basim uh, on the other line here. Yes, uh, Basim. Let me be a little bit more specific. The okay. perspectives yeah, yes, are please, too, please. too tightly framed. They need to be. You need to step back a little bit so we can see the building. In context, they're they're heavily focused on the building itself, which is great. Okay. But okay. It, it'd be nice to understand how it relates to everything else in the neighborhood. Well, so you need me to take elevation for the adjacent buildings to show you how it will look like next to it, or or in relation to what's next to it, or when you say the neighborhood, the neighborhood is huge from Franklin to. Lake Street from Lindale to Nicholas. It is a great neighborhood. Um, yes. I think the best I way to describe. I think the best way to describe it. If I'm, if I'm looking at your building right now, the views are like yeah. this. I just want to see it like that. Okay. All right. So how? Uh, what what would you like like us to to provide you with? I think it's those same perspective views. You just got to widen your your right. lens angle a bit. OK, OK. In right. terms of the shadowing, um, uh, it's uh, um, to the north of it is the existing mall. So it, there's no shadowing over an existing building. Oh. Um, and if it, you know, you know, if you are going from the south uh, 
to the north. Uh, so there's, if you are talking about the Greenway, it, it will not, it has no relation. It sits way back from that. Yeah. Bassam, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear about what I meant by shadows. Not the effects of the shadows on adjacent properties, but actually the effect of oh, sun, it, sunlight it, on the building itself and how it articulates its different planes um, of material. So I, I think. Wow. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, just for um, your information, I'm sure the northerly um, elevation of this project you, you won't be able to see because it's adjacent to the mall. The easternly you will not be able to see again because it's against the other mall. Uh, the, the only two feasibly can be seen is from Lake Street approximately 500 feet um, if you're looking at the, the building facing south. The only elevation that we are focused on and I articulated to Brian, my architect, that I want to see a lot of glass. I want to see a beautiful building. In fact, we, we set it back um, to create a curb building, like curved, very pretty. Unfortunately, because of other requirements, the city have so many feet you can be back from the public sidewalk, we couldn't do that. So we are intending on giving a good product, not a cheap product, and a beautiful product in, in, in facing the public street. And that's the main area. Staff rec recommended that we put windows facing Lake Street, though I disagree. I don't think people are going to see it much from Lake Street. We accommodated that by pushing the building back to the south, uh, to the north, to create windows. So. There's so much you can do, obviously, when you're surrounded by other buildings um, that could dictate to you what you can and can do. Absolutely, and I, I you know, I, that you, I, that I feel the aspiration in this project coming through. Um, I think that's wonderful. I just think it can be shown to really bring those aspects um, into fuller view with understanding sure. how when sunlight hits the building, sure. what happens. Yep. And reflect in your eyes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, um, it's a lot of glass. <laughs> so I got you. So Brian, you can you address that? I take it uh, the, the commissioner concerned. I don't know the commissioner name. I'm sorry, I just jumped in. I just picked up my kids from school and I'm driving. So you 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 got the point what the commissioner is talking about. Yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. 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 All right, we have a question from Commissioner Marwa. Yes, hi. Sorry, the sun has set hi. as I'm sitting here. I'm getting darker as I realize as I'm sitting. Um, <laughs> Time to go home. Just kidding. <laughs> no, the sun is setting. Um, I had a question about the southeast side that Commissioner McGuire had also mentioned. No. Is there another no, building no. going up? Is there a plan? I'm trying yes. to understand. Sorry, yes. from these renderings. Okay. I, yes. There's a building that's eight story high that I am also building um, to the southeast corner of it. Okay, so are there units throughout there that will have very little sunlight then on your southeast side of your building? Well, uh, this is, uh, Commissioner, this is to the northwest of this project. And the height of that building is eight story. So the, so the, Fifth going up of that building is residential. So it really shouldn't really have much of an effect, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, because I just, my only concern is that if the residential portion will sure, be very, sure, low, sure. And if there's a new building sure. getting next to sure, it, sure. Or is sure, there enough sure. light coming into those units? Um, and, 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 those sure. Commission, and, and so happened that part of the building, when it adjacent to this building, the residential sits back way further. So you will not, if you're on the fifth floor, you will not see this building. Okay. Okay, I think I follow what you're, what the, um, how how you figured it out. But I, I was just gonna mention, I liked the curb 
or the curved uh, faca- uh, windows that you're adding. I, it's I, nice. I, I, I really, I really do, I, and I love it, and and I really want to do it. But unfortunately, because we have to comply with other setbacks with the city, it's going to really be very challenging to make it happen. The curved glass facade? Yes. Or the it it will all be glass, but there's okay. a question whether it can be or it can be. I want it to be, but you know, if you damn if you do and you damn if you don't. <laughs> so you, the, the commissioner and myself might like it, but then zoning doesn't like it because it, there's so much you could sit back from the public street on Pleasant Avenue. So if we, if we created this curb, then to do it right, we have to be in the public right away. That takes six months approval, if it gets approved, because it will be encroaching. If we set it back in, then we, we're in violation. I shouldn't say in violation. We're not in compliance with what the city wants the setbacks to be. So that's debatable. However, I guarantee you the front will be glass, a lot of glass, just like you're looking at it. Okay, great. Well, I, you know. And the elevator, Commissioner, the elevator also going to be all glass as you're going up looking into the street. Okay, very nice. Um, Thank you. I implore staff to, you know, try to figure out a cool middle ground. I'm sure there's something in there that we could figure out for I the wish. Other. Yeah, I would love that. I really like the curb building, to be honest with you. I really do. But I don't want to wait six months, maybe, to get approvals. We'll talk, Bassam. We'll, we'll see if we can Andrew? find a good common sense solution here. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll be all hey, right. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Yes, yes, thank very you. Good. And I'm, I'm really uh, very thrilled to have one of the best uh, planners uh, on, on board with this project. We have a lot of great planners, as you know, but this is my favorite one. Thank so you, Andrew is great to work with. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's my pleasure. All right. Uh, commissioners, any other discussion on this item? All right. I'm not seeing any. Um, so thank you to the applicant for sharing your project with us. Thank you so much. And, and thanks for my kids here for not be, uh, for being quiet in the car. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, up next is item number six. Um, oh, it's item number six. It's our third item. Um, all right. Commissioner Ford is leaving. We will miss you. Uh, our third item is 3901 Chicago Avenue and 3900 Elliott Avenue and staff is Shanna Sether. Good afternoon. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, the next Say, item- Excuse me, Shanna, I, I hope you don't mind me jumping here. This is um, Council Member Rainbow. So, and I have to leave, so I just wanna tell you that, but I, I'm hoping to get invited to the next one a little bit earlier so I can fit it in my schedule. There were some unprecedented issues with the invitation for today's meeting. Great. So it went okay. out and it disappeared and it went out again and it disappeared a second time. We're not sure what was happening, but hopefully that never happens again. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I look forward to serving with all of you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Um, so the next item up, on the agenda for today is for Calvary Church and Apartments uh, located at 3901 Chicago Avenue and 3900 Elliott Avenue. This is actually two projects, um, but they're coming, they'll be coming in um, simultaneously. The first is to remodel the existing church at 3901 Chicago Avenue by adding 21 dwelling units um, within the uh, existing portion of the building. And then they'll also be doing some interior remodel to expand the existing food shelf. And then the second project is to allow for the new construction in a two story multiple family building with 20 dwelling units. Let's see. 
presently at 3900 um, Elliott, that's the surface parking lot that serves the existing church and food shelf. Um, so that surface parking lot would go away in order to allow for the new construction. Um, so as I mentioned, they're proposing two separate projects kind of um, in tandem. Um, and there'll be 21 new units within the existing uh, church building. Um, the sanctuary will remain. And then um, that app that project would require so far that we know uh, site plan review to allow for the additional dwelling units. Um, staff has some questions about the bicycle parking and making sure that that complies with the minimum requirements for the zoning ordinance. The bulk of today's feedback that we're looking for is on the um, the new construction, the two story building proposed at 3900 Elliott. Um, the applicant is seeking a number of land use applications in order to allow for this new construction. Versus a petition to rezone the property from the R1A district to the R3 district, and that's to allow for more than three dwelling units. The second is a variance to increase the maximum lot area. So the existing parcel is 15,582 square feet. However, the maximum lot area permitted in the interior two district is 14,000 square feet. So that variance is required. The next variance is a uh, variance of the maneuvering standards. So there's a minimum um, uh, dimension of 22 feet behind uh, a standard stall. These are, I believe, 60 degree stalls, um, but uh, regardless, we don't have the minimum distance behind the, the parking and the plan is to maneuver in the public alley, so that variance is required. Um, and that variance is also uh, required whenever you have more than three proposed uh, vehicle parking spaces accessed off the alley. The maximum floor area ratio for the multiple family dwelling um, is 0.8, and as proposed, we're at 0.86, so a variance is required there. Um, all of the bicycle parking, as shown so far on the plans, is located in the basement, so that would not comply with the bicycle parking requirements that um, at least 50% of those spaces be accessible at grade without having to go upstairs or, or downstairs or um, through the use of an elevator. And then finally, the new construction will require site plan review. Um, both properties have a future land use designation of urban neighborhood, uh, which allows for residential uses, religious institutions, and the um, expanded food shelf as part, uh, as an accessory use to the religious institution. Nicollet Avenue, uh, or I'm sorry, Chicago Avenue is a goods and services corridor, uh, which support greater densities both on that corridor and nearby. The property at 3901 Chicago Avenue is uh, has a built form designation of corridor four. The existing building is two stories in height and 74 feet to the top of the bell tower, but there are no planned additions to that structure. Um, so we would say that's in compliance. Um, 3900 Elliott, however, has a built form designation of interior two. Um, staff had talked with the applicant early on about potentially looking at other options. Um, I think originally they wanted a three story building that would have required a comprehensive plan amendment. And instead, they gone to great lengths to design a building that is two stories in height with light wells that um, come into the lower level of that uh, proposed structure. Um, and the um, the guidance for interior two when looking at multiple family dwellings with four or more dwelling units is um, is allowed on larger lots. And so then we look to the zoning code that would give us this range. So at least 7,500 square feet of lot area and 50 feet of lot width would be expected as a minimum um, lot area and lot width in order to consider multiple family. And uh, the parcel here is well over that at 15,582 square feet. So staff is seeking feedback um, uh, as listed on page four of the memorandum re related specifically to the proposed rezoning from R1A to R3, um, noting the existing policies and, and the existing lot size and the proximity to Chicago Avenue of Goods and Services Corridor all uh, um, as reasons to consider higher density zoning here. And then um, we're also looking for feedback related to the maximum lot area. So even though it's an existing 
parcel non-conforming um, to, to the lot area, that variance is still required. Um, additionally, we are looking for feedback on the maximum FAR increase. So the, the difference between compliance and, and and the variance is less than 900 square feet. So we would like to get some feedback on that particular variance. Staff is struggling with finding a practical difficulty unique to a parcel that warrants the, the exception to the strict adherence to the code. Um, so looking for feedback there. Um, staff is concerned about the proposed parking layout and the quantity of stalls backing into the alley, and then also kind of the configuration. So if if you're utilizing some of these spaces, you'll coming, you'll have to come um, southbound along the public alley in order to maneuver in. Otherwise, you're doing some awkward maneuvering in the public alley, which is something that we would discourage anyway. Um, and lastly, just um, talking about the bicycle bicycle parking requirements. So those are the areas that staff is seeking specific feedback on, but. Um, Maybe before we turn over to the Planning Commission, make sure that the applicant has a chance to introduce themselves and fill in with any additional information that would be helpful. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, my name's Dan Walsh. I'm uh, work for I work for Trellis, the the applicant for this new development. Um, also here with me is uh, the architects uh, from Urban Works um, and we are uh, trellis uh, used to be called community housing development corporation we changed our name about a week a week ago we're uh, an affordable housing owner and developer we've been been around since 1991 and own about 5,000 units many of which are in uh, the city of minneapolis so a uh, couple couple things to add um about the the development even even though it is two uh separate land use applications the development uh the existing building and the and the new building they will have one owner they will function um as one housing uh community and uh all of the units have secured project-based uh section 8 rent assistance and will be affordable and restricted to households up to 30% of the area median income. Um, it's a family focused development. Uh, we've fit in, uh, the majority of the units are two and three bedrooms and we fit in a few four bedrooms as well. Um, we are really excited uh, and thankful for the partnership that we have with the Calvary Church congregation to really continue to utilize the common spaces uh, and fill them with people and, and food and community connections um, and are also, you know, after working with them and, and after a, a pretty extensive community engagement process this summer, uh, we're, we're happy to upgrade the food shelf so that it functions more like a um, it just functions better uh, and we've actually shifted its orientation so that it's more oriented to Chicago Avenue, which is the more commercial um, street. Uh, finally, I'll say that the recent great news as of this morning um, is that this project received the city's allocation of uh, low income housing tax credits this year um, and the maximum allowable housing trust fund award. Um, so we do, we have secured the capital funding that we we need for this development and are, are working towards um, closing this coming summer. So I'll stop there and uh, our architects are, are also here to answer, answer any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Commissioner Alper. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited about this project and um, I'm the Minneapolis Park Board representative to the Planning Commission, and nobody's noted so far that it's right across from Phelps Park. Um, so it's super to hear that you are planning for families. Um, I'm sure these families will be crossing Chicago Avenue to go to the park. I'm sure they'll be crossing also this alley. Um, so I, I just want to say I'm supportive of R3, um, that change. Um, I love the courtyard. 
green space, the community garden um, beds that you have planned. Um, and let's see, I wanted to say that parking layout with the alley back out. Um, I, I'm wondering, I, and again, um, it's my second meeting on the Planning Commission, but and this might require some other permit, but it would be really awesome to see something, maybe it's signage, maybe it's a, um, um, you know, one of those mirrors so that people can see uh, when they, you know, not everybody has um, a newer car that allows them to, with backing out help, um, something to put on the wall of the existing sanctuary perhaps that could go there or also um, and maybe this would require some extra application but speed bumps in the alley I'm just really thinking about kids who are walking from 3900 30 3900 Elliott Avenue on the sidewalk going to Phelps Park um, that'd be great to see but I it, it sounds like I like the project thanks for sharing it tonight that's a great suggestion, particularly on the speed bumps um, and all of the other feedback on the signage. Thank you for that. That's great. I'm not seeing other comments right now, so um, I'll go ahead. I agree with what Commissioner Alper said. Um, I would be supportive of all of the applications, um, assuming staff could make findings. Um, but I would say that I would want to see you meet the bicycle storage requirements. Yeah, we we would be so we've um, we've we've worked really hard on the on the bicycle requirements and would just love to talk with you about some of the possibilities. Um, it is a very tight site. Um, and, you know, like we've noted before, we're adding a lot of community functions. And to comply with the built form, the um, there are not a lot of on grade uh, spaces in the new construction. Um, there is an elevator in the building, even though it's two stories. And we did make sure that we carved out a really good bike room in in the basement. Um, I I might turn it over. You know we. Uh, I might turn it over to the architect and and we know that there's some, you know, we have some other ideas. We um, we we greatly believe in uh, bike infrastructure and using bikes as much as possible. And we don't you know, we're long term owners. We don't like it when we don't have enough bike storage. And so, you know, maybe bikes are tied up to our playgrounds or something like that. So so this is definitely not something that we're trying to um, get around or not support, but we're just really struggling with practically where, how to comply with the requirements given that we, we don't wanna take away units um, or, or otherwise compromise some of the, um, the parking stalls that given the, the added functions of the um, church gatherings and the food shelf, like we really were, we're really focused on the accessible route and ensuring that there are accessible spaces for for those folks, and then also um, visitor parking and things like that. Yeah. So I don't you, know. Maybe, go ahead. I can jump in here, Dan. If you um, if you are going to not meet the the requirements you know when you come back for a vote i just really like to see kind of laid out for us what are your constraints how have you tried to make it um you know as ideal as you can um given those constraints yeah um shanna is it possible to jump to the level one plan Can you go up one more for me just for a second, then we'll jump back to sub level. There we go. So as you can see, the um, I think our biggest struggle here is meeting the interior long term parking requirement on grade. And so the existing facility, the existing church does not have an entrance that is on grade. 
So once you go in any door that is existing at the church, you immediately have to go up or down steps or use the elevator. So that, that, that building itself is just really tough to get that on-grade requirement indoors for the bike parking. Um, we layer onto that the historic um, applications and historic requirements for the building. It is on the National Historic Register. So we do have SHPO and NPS that are heavy influencers on the building and what we can do to the outside of it. Um, so in the existing facilities specifically, um, you know, we are, we're happy to explore areas within the courtyard um, or even up on the north side on 39th where we do have an elevator entry point um, for exterior bike racks. Um, it's just gonna be tough in this building to get that interior par bike parking component, um, but we're happy to look at that more. Um, sure, yeah, and and like I said, just showing us kind of what those difficulties are and what you've done to yeah. try to make it as best as you can. One idea, I have no idea if this would work, but um, having a, you know, the bike <laughs> ramp that goes up or down the stairs, things oh. like that, that would make it easier. Sure. We can, we can definitely explore that. Um, in the new construction, again, as Anna mentioned, we originally had a three-story building here. Or that was our hope. Um, we've modified it to be two stories with some um, garden-level units below with the terracing pieces that you see on both the east and the west sides. Um, and then with that, with the, the elevation change across the site as well, we have this entry condition on the north side. And then from that point, you have to pop up a little bit to level one. Um, and so we're we placed an elevator in accordingly so that you can pop down and get to bike parking. So in the lower level of the new construction, we are providing that bike parking at one to one. Um, it's just, again, not on grade. And the concern or our concerns at this point with, with carving our, out more level one space for bike parking is that it would impact the overall unit count and bedroom count um, and our, our overall ability to provide those housing units. Um, so we do have it in the lower level at one-to-one -one, and then exterior bike racks um, along the north side, along 39th um, as well there. So okay. those are the, the things we've done at this point, but yeah, we're happy yeah. to keep looking at that. Yeah, thank you for laying that out for us too. Yeah. Commissioners, any other comments, questions, or discussion on this item? Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner McGuire. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so the building shown right now on the east side of this site or whatever, um, right side of the site plan right now, that's an entirely new building, correct? Correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, so I think I would agree with staff that um, I think the layout could be a little better, and I don't think there's really a practical difficulty for some of these variances given that it's a vacant piece of land. So I would be supportive of the use um, and floor area ratio and lot size variance, but the others, I mean, we're dealing with a vacant piece of land. So um, for me, like just figuring out how to make some of that stuff work with staff, I think I would defer to what um, Shanna said in the beginning of her presentation. I think there's a better way to lay some of that out. So just working with staff on that. That would just be my comment. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Smiley. Yeah, uh, um, I agree with Commissioner McGuire's comments uh, completely. And I also just have a question. It's like the very first thing that came to my mind when I first saw this um, report was whether or why this new building is so different looking from the um, church. And I, I mean, obviously I understand the church is being reused and everything, but design wise, why do they look so different? Can they not, um, can the new building not uh, go a little, like at least adopt a bit of those um, design elements from the church that looks much better? And then just like, in, in terms of the 
designed to improve that. Uh, so especially if they're going to be kind of associated with each other. There's just a, the it's the very first thing that came to my mind, and it's like, why are they so different? Hi, commissioners. I can talk to that. My name is David Miller. I'm with Urban Works Architecture, and um, you know, as Mary mentioned, the church is on the historic register, and um, you know, it's a beautiful building. And so, one of the things when we approach designing new construction with um, existing or historic structures is how to really make them, I think, um, distinct and honor the beauty that is the church, really make that the star of the show. So our approach here was to make the new construction a little bit quieter in terms of design, um, you know, not selecting a brick that is trying to match it, because that was one of the really rich things about the existing materials is this combination of multicolor beiges and buffs and um, tan bricks. And so instead of mimicking that on the new building, what we chose to do is use that in the accent colors. So you see the the trim around the windows um, have have tones that are very uh, similar to the tones of the brick and have a depth and variety um, in how those are laid out. And then selecting a brick that kind of complements or again, really defers to the, the brick of the um, existing church by using something that is more um, neutral in tone, but still very rich in material. So we're proposing a, a um, dark iron spot brick, which has uh, a very interesting sheen uh, when the sun hits it. So as you're standing around the building, sometimes it'll look very bright and at other times it'll have um, more play and depth and texture to that. Uh, I appreciate your response and I totally understand not wanting to replicate uh, the church and or like letting it stand on like, you know, show and be distinct. I do still think that that doesn't mean that the other building has to be so quiet that it seems like it, it has no distinctive features, basically. So that's just my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Alper. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I believe I heard the applicants say that they were considering a three-story building, but plans changed. And I, I, uh, I guess I was just kind of curious um, why, you know, if, if, uh, if, gosh, I mean, if we could have uh, more families living near Phelps Park, uh, to me, that, that seems um, great. And I, I would, I, so anyway, I'm just, maybe it's the zoning code. Maybe it's something I don't know, but I'd, I'd, I'd love to find out. Thanks. It is Commissioner Alper. Um, it's the built firm designation has a firm two story uh, maximum height requirement for, for structures in this district. So in order to allow for a taller building, there are two options. One is a variance. Um, which is very difficult to find practical difficulty with a vacant site. And then the other option is to amend the comprehensive plan. Um, and we had some conversations early on about um, that and, and gave some feedback. Um, that's not the question before you today, but uh, just to at high level, comprehensive plan amendment has to occur prior to the applications for land use approvals. So the process would take them through the Committee of the Whole, City Planning Commission, and City Council. And if approved by the City Council, staff would make the application on behalf of the applicant to the Metropolitan Council to officially amend the city's comprehensive plan specific to the built form over, or I'm sorry, the built form maps. Um, and then they can come back and start the process that they're here for you today. I mean, the best case kind of estimates um, is at least four to six months prior to um, coming to this stage, which was applying. So the uh, we applaud the architects and the applicant for working diligently to try their best to fit within the existing built form district um, and setbacks and all the other things that come along with it. Um, I, I 
I think that, I mean, it's still always an option for them to come in for the comprehensive plan amendment, but at least before you today, we're just looking at the land use applications within that interior two designation. Thank you. Commissioner Marwa. Hi, um, I think, I'm sorry, I had just about for one minute, so I'm not sure if this was answered, but I was just curious why there was no balconies incorporated on, on this project. It feels very affordable housing-y and not, no offense taken, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious why there's no balconies on this project. It just, it feels very like a block. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give a short answer and then Mary, if you have, have anything to add, we, we have worked hard to kind of articulate, uh, the, the facade and bumping out, um, it's might be a little hard to see on this one, but bumping out some sections and then bumping out the windows. Um, the windows are very large and, um, I, uh, in our experience um, with a family population, um, when you're not building a really, really tall building and you and you might really have a, a view that balconies end up um, just not being the best use of of money. And so we have tried to put, uh, our budget into other amenities for the project, um, like the oversized windows and the the percentage of brick, uh, frankly, is one of the most expensive materials. Um, we have, for example, in-unit washers and dryers, um, dishwashers, um, large units um, with really, really durable finishes. And so those kinds of amenities for families, we just found was a better um, better use of funds um, than the balcony. They're in the in the adjacent uh, development, which will be, you know, which will function as one, there there are also many, many common amenities in the in the existing sanctuary space. And we really, um, we really just, we felt like investing in in those spaces um, as well. But so the point not, is, the point is, there's well, not the point is well taken. The point there's not funding available to put balconies on these projects or. Yeah, and, and that it was, I mean, it was just our, I mean, it's also our choice. Um, you know, it, it, there isn't an infinite amount of money, and so we just felt like. Um, given this population and the context, uh, that we would rather kind of spend the, the budget on other. Have you assessed in your other buildings, and I know you've done a number of art spaces as well, but have you done, have you asked if residents, you know, if they were to prioritize in unit washer and dryer or balconies on units, which one would be a higher prioritization? You have. Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, I we actually have surveyed residents on this very question and i'll say i mean just the, the it often gets used as storage frankly um they're really nice for taller buildings where you really get a view or if given the setbacks and things you can offer a bigger balcony but families have consistently said to us that in unit washers dryer in unit washer dryers bathtubs good, good. Uh, um, I was in the, actually mid morning I was and in the things like dishwashers um, trying to get it out and everything also common uh the common amenities like having a community kitchen uh we also have a fitness room and uh, for families we're going to program kind of an indoor play space for young kids and um, and, and having that courtyard space too. So those are consistently uh, ranked as higher. Okay, that's that's fair if you've if you've asked tenants and gotten that feedback. I mean, I, I have live in a multifamily building and use my balcony every day possible when the weather's nice, and it feels like an extension of your apartment and being able to you know have outdoor space easily accessible to you. So I always just want to make sure that people have that same ability. Yeah, I will. I will add one thing yeah. that on our. Our east elevation, um, our building face is set at our setback line. So 
we would not be allowed balconies on the east side. Um, and then also just with those garden level units, um, it, it would feel a little uh, intrusive if there was that balcony kind of at your within your sight line on level one. Um, so you didn't want people to feel like they're they're in a garden level also with this kind of um, mm -hmm. element coming down on top of them. So I think if we would have been able to maintain the three stories, um, it would have been something we would have explored more, especially on that west side of the building. So I want to add that in. Yeah, particularly if we had not had an elevator and even putting them along the top level, um, we've done that, done that sometimes. And the it's a good question, good good feedback. Yeah, definitely. All right, commissioners, any other comments or discussion? I'm not seeing any, um, so thank you to the applicant for sharing this project with us. Thank and you all, have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our last item for this evening. It is 5121 and 5129 France Avenue Staff South and staff is again Shanna Souther. Um, I have to step away to get my computer charger for a second. So I think Commissioner Mar was in charge for a couple of minutes. Um, but go ahead, Shanna. I was going to say, I just need a second to pull everything back up. <laughs> so this is good. All right. Happy to help. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. The next item is for the properties located at 5121 and 5129 France Avenue South. Um, the applicant is proposing a new four story residential building with between uh, 35 and 40 dwelling units and approximately 35 uh, to 45 underground parking spaces. Um, sorry, just waiting for my computer to respond to my requests. Oh, that's not a good sign. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, the property is zoned R1A, uh, multiple family district, and the built form overlay um, classification is corridor three. The property area is um, 23,306 square feet, so just over a half acre in size. Um, you can see kind of the existing context of the area. So uh, across the, the street to the west is the, is the city of Edina. So we're right here on the city border. Um, the block is primarily made up of single and two family dwellings. Um, and then there's a two story daycare that was uh, built recently at the northwest corner of the, of the block. Um, so far, staff has identified um, three land use applications. The first is a rezoning uh, from the multiple, from R1A to um, the applicant is seeking the R4 district. Um, a variance to reduce the front yard setback along France Avenue, and that is based on the established setback created by uh, connecting the closest corners of the single family dwelling uh, to the north to the dwelling um, to the south. So there's a, a line that uh, cuts through the front of the building. And so um, we want to spend uh, the majority of the conversation today around that front yard setback variance. The applicant has spent uh, a great deal of time with some of the um, adjacent property owners along Ewing, and um, they want to have an opportunity to talk to the commission about that today. Um, so staff is seeking feedback as listed on uh, the third page of our memo today, which is uh, regarding the petition to rezone uh, the future land use designation for this property is urban neighborhood in corridor three, which would allow for medium density residential. Um, that would be consistent with R4, um, the front yard setback, um, so the, I should also note the district setback is 15 feet. Um, so we'll have that as part of the conversation here today. And that um, the, the proposed building is four stories in the uh, corridor three designation. And so the applicant will seek an administrative height increase. Um, and they're still kind of working through the, the final details on how they are proposing to do the FAR and the height increase. Um, 
but also kind of paying attention to um, the required findings specific for the height increase. Uh, note, staff notes in our in our memorandum that the fourth floor is recessed on all four sides. Uh, this is kind of a nice way of looking at the fourth floor, the amenity patios and, and um, spaces that kind of create a separation uh, between the adjacent lower density residential uses to the north, the south, and to the east. Um, and uh, so with that, I, I'm, ready to turn it over to the applicant to fill in with any additional information. Thank you. Thank you, Shanna. And uh, hello committee. My name is Alex Giese with Zavi Development. Um, it's nice to be in front of the committee again to present another project and I'm really excited about this one and, and <clears throat> truly looking forward to feedback on some of the things that Shanna described. Um, just a little about me, I'm a solo developer. Um, so I rely heavily on partnerships with uh, my design build team, which consists of Tushi Montgomery Architects um, and LS Black Constructors. So we have a nice efficient collaborative process um, that, uh, that I really, really enjoy. And also uh, speaking of collaboration, I really enjoy and appreciate working with city staff um, and particularly Shanna on this one, her guidance in terms, just from the very beginning, in terms of the right questions to ask and how we should approach this project um, as we think about design has been very instrumental in how we have approached it. Um, and to her point, uh, we spent a, a, a great deal of time on neighborhood engagement on this project before uh, really sort of sussing out what this design should look like. We have been through a few iterations based on feedback uh, that we've received from the zoning committee, the neighborhood association, and very importantly, the adjacent neighbors on <clears throat> behind the proposed uh, project on Ewing, um, who we believe are you know the most directly impacted um, by the the building that we're proposing here. Um, it's a it's a challenging site. Um, I would say mainly because there's no alley. Um, uh, on the block. And so uh, to Shanna's point, the thing that I think we really kind of want to focus on here tonight and get feedback on and what we've been focusing on with the various neighborhood groups and the neighbors is um, the need for a variance in order to achieve what we think is the best uh, building for everyone, um, which will require pushing the building forward out of their backyards on Ewing and into that setback. Um, along France, which we again feel is appropriate. Um, and so with that, I will, I'd like to introduce Evan Jacobson, principal architect at Tushi Montgomery Architects. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Tushi Montgomery, but they are, um, in my opinion, one of the best urban infill uh, firms in the city, and I enjoy working with them, and they're very thoughtful in their approach, um, as I like to be as well. And so I, um, Look forward to Evan's presentation here and then feedback from, from the commission. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. I'll move myself here. Um, so as as Alex has mentioned, um, we've gone to the neighborhood multiple times. I'm going to share a presentation that we gave to um, both the neighborhood group and the uh, the actually directly adjacent property owners. Um, that kind of illustrates kind of just the siting of this building, the massing of this building, and the impacts to the existing yards, and kind of tells the story of of why we're requesting that front yard setback. So if I can share my screen here, okay. Um, France Avenue, that's where we're at. Uh, existing context, Shanna covered this well, obviously. Uh, corridor 3, Interior 2 uh, is directly behind us uh, on the single family homes along Ewing, and then Interior 1 um, as you move further east. Uh, a mix of multifamily in blue, commercial in orange, our proposed site in yellow here. Um, so really the, the story starts out with kind of defining our, our setbacks um, and our buildable area for the project. This is our sandbox as we've been calling it in all of our discussions with the neighborhood uh, and city staff as we've gone along through this process. 
So the first image on the left here, uh, basically the red is our property line. Um, uh, by right, seven foot setback on the rear up to 42 feet in building height. So that defines kind of the rear and the side yard setbacks. And then the assumed um, or the interpolated front yard setback, as, as Shanna mentioned, that's defined by connecting the two nearest points of the adjacent principal structures. Drawing that line gives us this nice diagonal line on our front yard setback. You can see that 15 foot standard set yard standard front yard setback um, that goes along with the neighborhood zoning. So of this gray area, uh, you know, we would actually have to pull in a building about one foot from the blue dashed line uh, to meet all the other requirements in terms of um, impervious area and lock coverage. But in general, that's the sandbox that we've been playing in. Uh, so working with Alex and his team, uh, we've Kind of designed a pretty highly articulated building trying to reduce the overall sort of mass and um, bulk of the building and break that into smaller more palatable chunks that that may be reflective um, of more of the typical dimensions that you may find in a single family um, neighborhood or a neighborhood that is a transition between commercial single family and multifamily properties um, so looking at that articulated volume the dark black line basically represents our building footprint. So as you can see in this middle diagram, again, the green being our sandbox, if you will, um, we can largely fit the building that we have proposed within the sandbox with the exception of um, this small patio stack right here. We'd have to tuck that in and, and pull that back to um, really kind of go forward with a buy right project within that front yard setback requirement. Um, in short, what we're trying to do is take that volume and push that closer to France Avenue, where we think it's more appropriate along uh, the higher transit corridor of France and further from the backyard rear yard property line. As Alex mentioned, one of the unique attributes of this particular site, there is no rear alley. Uh, most of Minneapolis is served by a rear alley, which gives a nice 10 to 14 foot buffer between the rear yards of single family apartments, multifamily commercial projects. Um, so definitely something that's a little bit unique to this site that that we're trying to be responsive to. So as you can see, uh, the green line, that is our, our technical uh, required front yard setback. Our building footprint is encroaching on that. The gist of what that does for us, it takes our rear yard setback from basically a seven foot setback to you know, closer to a 19, foot setback, almost tripling, um, if not more, uh, that rear yard, which which we feel helps to preserve the air, light, and solar access from our neighbors to the east along Ewing. Uh, next diagram here, just kind of uh, a quick diagram along the full block of France uh, that, that we're on here. So you can see the commercial daycare, Shanna mentioned, uh, three single family rental homes, um, two, um, I think these, this is a duplex. This is also a multifamily dwelling. It's mislabeled in this diagram here. Uh, but again, looking at kind of the dimensional standards that you see um, uh, illustrated on that block, and again, trying to reduce our building mass into something that um, you know isn't directly responding or mimicking those actual standards of a single family home. We, we know this is not a single family home, but something that begins to be more palatable um, in that expression. Uh, south side or the plan south here, which is the west side, obviously much um, larger volumes, especially at the, the northern corner um, with the, the apartment building there and the condo building directly across from our site. Um, again, Shanna kind of went through this so I can breeze through this one, but the blue volume is the three story mass. The dark gray volume is the four story mass. This red line here, this is the section that I will show in our next diagram. Uh, so as you can see, France Avenue on the left, Ewing on the right, single family homes in the rear yard, proposed building uh, right in the middle. So property line, dark black dash line here, standard seven foot setback here. Um, you know, our kind of three story volume in this particular instance is at 24. So again, over three times the minimum setback. Uh, and then we're increasing that uh, another seven or eight feet uh, at that fourth floor to further increase that setback. Uh, same slide here, uh, but we did want to 
do a quick exercise to look at what a an actual three story building built directly on that property line would would look like. Uh, so this dark black wall right here that basically represents what somebody could build by right as a, a 41 foot wall is what I have drawn there. Um, you're allowed up to 42 feet uh, in the corridor three as a three story. Um, and again, then you would be beholden to that seven foot setback. So as you can see from the sight lines from you know, a neighbor's backyard, a neighbor's back stoop, or a pedestrian walking down Ewing. Um, you know, arguably you could say that it's, uh, you know, the building as proposed is, is as or even least lesser intrusive than, than a proposed three-story by right project could be. Um, and lastly, we did uh, we did a couple shadow studies. Um, there's a lot of content on this in this sheet here, so I'll kind of illustrate just the the primary ones we're looking at. But all of the uh, left rows, that is the proposed project. Uh, all of the right rows uh, would be basically that same three-story, 42-foot building built up to this the seven-foot rear and side yard setbacks. Um, so the the early morning, um, you know, not a not a whole lot of uh, contention there as our our shadows fall along France, uh, but you can see just for reference. So this would be the shadow line that's created by our building. This would be the shadow line that is created by a building that is built as a, a extrusion of that sandbox, so to speak. So not a whole lot of difference on the, the spring 9 a.m. Um, summer, not a whole lot of difference on the north side here uh, from either one of those buildings. Uh, and then as you go to uh, 9 a.m. in the winter, everything obviously gets a little bit more gray, a little bit more dark, so a lot more shadow in those. Um, we'll skip over the spring and just go kind of right to the, um, or the, the 5 p.m. Um, shadow studies because this is really obviously the the one that we're most concerned about is what we're doing to our neighbors to the east in the Ewing and so this middle one is really kind of the most telling shadow study that we produced to date uh, meaning that in the summer um, at 5 p.m. when that when that sun is setting our building will be creating a shadow line along this edge here whereas a three-story 42-foot building would actually have a deeper shadow line if it were to be built directly on that seven foot set yard, setback. So um, we were very interested to do these these shadow studies and and I think that everything that Chan has said about our engagement with the neighborhood is you know trying to determine the best possible solution to make a viable development on this site for Alex and his team while maintaining and respecting the adjacent neighbors to the greatest degree possible. Uh, and that is the extent of of what I had to present related to the setback and the variance requests that we're asking for. Thank you, and thank you for kind of laying out how you landed where you did. Commissioners, are there any questions, comments, discussion? I will say that um, I like what you did with the front setback, how it is angled, um, and that um, I would support that. Um, and the, the rezoning and the height also um, seem supportable. Uh, Commissioner Baxley. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. I would agree also, and I just wanted to um, comment on uh, really appreciative of the thoughtful process about kind of understanding what's the built form, um, really working with the neighborhood to um, kind of have it both be a successful project from the development standpoint, but also something that um, um, really works within those uh, parameters to um, push and pull and arrive at something that I think is is uh, is contributing. It's, it's really nice. Um, so I think the process uh, should really be commended. I think my only uh, comment would be, um, I think the the building is very elegant, and I think the you know proportions, everything it meets the street. I just for me, I think that entry isn't quite there yet. It feels this sort of lumpy little uh, bump. It wants to kind of really push into the building, so I can read those you know very elegant forms of the um, 
and create kind of a different um, sort of street presence. But other than that, um, I think that the kind of thoughtful process uh, should really be um, mentioned and celebrated. Thank you for that. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. And we will work on that front entrance, won't we? <laughs> Uh, and I should I do want to point out too that just as it relates to neighborhood engagement, you know, um, I, you know, I'm I'm proud and glad about the process that we undertook. Um, not all the neighbors, and you know this, are going to support this project. I, by and large, everyone has supported the idea of pushing the building forward, but there are folks, of course, who just don't want the building at all, no matter where it sits on the site. So. We're going to, you know, we're going to get some opposition, but I feel good about the job we did and communicating our ideas. Commissioner Alper. Thanks. I wanted to say uh, first a, a comment that I really appreciated your easy to understand renderings as a new uh, planning commissioner talking about your sandbox that you're working from. That was greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, and also, I was just looking at the site on Google Maps and, and um, you know, thinking about what you said about the daycare that's located really nearby and um, uh, uh, the fact that there's no alley, um, the fact that all these existing single family homes right now have driveways, which cause, frankly, dangerous conflicts, I believe, between people walking on that existing sidewalk. And so I'm excited to see that you know, it will, your new development will minimize, uh, I think it will eliminate at least one driveway, I believe. Um, and then I just wanted to ask about that aspect of it is, and I, I have no idea the answer to it, but um, have you thought about the width? Like, is, is it the minimum width possible? Or have you, is there any way you could accommodate a, a smaller, with if that makes sense to have minimized conflict between people walking and cars entering the garage. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, I think right now the, the driveway is probably designed to dimensional standards that would be required at the city of Minneapolis. I know on past projects we have reduced the uh, an area like this where, where we don't have parking and actually off of it. Um, so I think that that's definitely something that we could further explore with Shanna to really kind of dial in what the width of that access to our lower level garage should be. Great, thank you. Commissioner McGuire. We can't hear you if you're talking, Commissioner McGuire. Sorry, I keep hard muting myself. <laughs> I'm borrowing someone's headphones. This isn't my usual color. Um, Shanna, um, that sandbox line that they drew, um, he said that that would be allowed like by right, the, the tall vertical building that they had drawn on there. Can you just confirm that like with the shadow study they did, that building, um, as shown, kind of pushed closer to the residents behind them would have been allowed by right and they wouldn't need any variances. Yes, that was one of the plans we looked at originally. Um, as Evan mentioned, just the there was a patio in the front that they would have had to alter in order to comply with the zoning ordinance. So we asked the applicant to consider doing this project without the front yard setback variance. Um, and they, they to their credit, they drew it up accurately. So with a 40, with allowed for the maximum height, uh, 42 feet, that would require um, interior side yard setback and rear yard setback of seven feet. And um, I don't think we have really highlighted kind of the change in the rear property line, which also kind of makes it more of a challenging development sandbox. Um, so they were able to demonstrate that it could be done with. Um, almost an identical floor plate, um, well, floor plates for sure, uh, but project without requiring any variances. And then we asked that they 
they communicate with some of their neighbors and, and see if there was support to bring the building closer to France Avenue. But certainly we recognize there's no alley. Um, so that's uh, creating an impediment to the site. It you know, reduces the preferred transportation access as well. The awkward shape of the parcel and then the adjacent location of the single family dwelling to the north really kind of setting the standard for where that setback is measured. But yes, I can confirm that we uh, looked at it with the applicant together and confirmed that uh, what they've said is correct, that they could build this building without variance. OK, perfect. Um, with that clarification, um, I would be supportive of the um, plan shown tonight, moving it away from the residents um, as long as staff can find findings for those variances. I think it meets it a lot. Um, better and it's the same similar floor plan that would be allowed by right, but is nicer to the neighbor. So um, yeah, I'd be supportive of that. Thanks. Commissioner Marwa. Yeah, hi. I also just wanted to voice my support of this project. It, it's been a while since we've seen one that doesn't look like a complete block. Um, a box. So I'm very thankful for your architectural work on this. I know how much work that goes into creating the different types of spaces, but I think with the different developments and the density we're seeing come to 50th in France, this will, you know, help stand out. There's a lot of the ones with the trail, like the ones with the cool garden, the snow pile, like ones coming up too. I think it's kind of making a neat look for that area that's all kind of feeling something unique and has these very modern finishes to it and big glass and kind of these fun trellis gardens and setbacks and that is just nice to see. I think if all these developments coming in at once all look like boxes like we've seen a lot of them you start to just build this big thick massing in a district that's when neighbors really start to really feel that imposing nature of these huge buildings coming in. I think this kind of interesting architectural work that's going on at this will hopefully um, add to kind of the distinctive uh, neighborhood that you all are all building there as multifamily developers. Um, yeah, so I was just going to support. Uh, we saw we've seen so many different projects come through at this at this intersection. So it's really interesting to see, I think, in, you know, a couple years from now, what really how 50th in France really forms its own distinctive character through this. So thank you for um, your work on the architecture side. Thank you. Commissioners, any other comments or discussion? All right, I'm not seeing any, so thank you to the applicant for sharing your project with us. Thank you very much. Appreciate the feedback and the support. Uh, all right, uh, Kimberly, are there any updates this evening? Nothing new to report since Monday's meeting. Um, so thank you all for joining us tonight. And um, again, the invites tonight were not supposed to be as hard to find. Um, so we'll work with our IT team to make sure that doesn't happen again. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, all right, so we've, we've completed all the items on our agenda. Is there anything else anyone would like to discuss before we adjourn? All right, uh, if not, and without objection, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Our next planning commission meeting is Monday, February 7th, and our next committee of the whole will be Thursday, February 10th. Have a good evening. <laughs>